Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you in the name of Jesus. It is our prayer that the victory that you have given unto us, even through your death and resurrection, it shall be permanent in Jesus' name. We have come even this morning to study at your feet. Father, reveal yourself to us even through your word in the mighty name of Jesus. The topic today says kingdom influencers. Father, in every sphere of our life, every opportunity, every moment, let us be able to use our lives even to influence others even for good in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone that you have ordained to be here this morning, Father, please bring them in the name of Jesus. Everyone that will contribute, everyone that will ask questions, Father, we pray that we shall all benefit even from all these interactions this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. None shall go back empty handed in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise for that which you have done. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Please let's have our seats. Who can remind us what we studied last week? Anybody? Christian apologetics. Who is a Christian apologetic? Someone who defends his or her faith. Thank you very much. So last week we looked at lesson 30, talking about Christian apologetics. And um, we said that um, a Christian apologetic is somebody who rises up to defend the Christian faith. And that is basically because we are living in a dispensation whereby we now have so many false teachers, we have so many people promoting false doctrines and denying basically the truth of the gospel. And so that is why we are being called upon at a time like this, even to defend the truth of the Christian faith. We looked at two outlines. The first one says, contend for the faith, and the second one says with gentleness and um, respect. In other words, if you are a child of God, we do not have any excuse not to be able to defend our faith. And for us to be able to defend our faith, that means we must be ready, we must be equipped, we must study the word, we must ourselves know the truth of the gospel, and then be prepared to demolish arguments and every pretensions that is set against the knowledge of God and basically to set people free, even with the truth. And in defending our faith, we also said that we must not do this in a rude manner, we must not be angry, we must not be disrespectful. While we are trying to pass across the truth, we should not do so in a disrespectful manner. We must not be concerned about winning arguments. It's not about winning arguments, but winning souls for the kingdom. And then in conclusion, we said we are commanded to use apologetics in as many or more places as we are told to preach the gospel. In other words, as many opportunities as present our way, we should use it to defend the gospel. So today, we are moving on to lesson 31 talking about kingdom influencers, kingdom influencers. And um, we'll be reading the memory verse together, taking from the book of Luke 8, verse 3. We can read it from our manual so that we are reading the same version. Luke 8, verse 3. One, two, go. And Joanna, the wife of Chosa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. Luke 8, verse 3. That is the memory verse. We will shortly take the Bible passage. Somebody should please get ready to read the Bible passage from Luke 23. We'll be reading from verses 49 to 53. Now, when we talk of kingdom influencer, we are referring to looking at the word influencer separately. We are referring to a person who is able to control or who is able to get other people to behave or react in a particular way. 
Today we are in the era of the social media and uh, we have so many people on the social media platforms and they post things and before you know it, they are maybe able to garner so much uh, followings and people are following what they are doing. In other words, they are able to influence people even to their various sites. So, but in relation to us as um, children of God, we are talking about us being able to also get people to act in a godly way or persuade them to behave in a way that will be beneficial even to the kingdom. Luke 23, 49 to 53. Anybody there, please? Yes, you can read the NLT. Thank you. Microphone for... Can we have a second mic, please? Please go ahead, Daddy. What did I get? Now, therefore, was a good and righteous man named Joseph. He was a member of the Jewish High Council, but he had not agreed with the decision and actions of the other religious leaders. He was from the town of Arimathea in Judea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. He went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body, the last verse. Then he took the body down from the cross and wrapped it in a long sheet of linen cloth and laid it in a new tomb that had been carved out of rock. The Lord bless you. Thank you very much, Daddy. So that's the memory verse that Daddy has just read from verses 49 to 53. And um, looking at the verse, the verse um, 49, what can we say about the women and the acquaintances of our Lord Jesus Christ? What can we say about them? In that verse um, 49, what can we say about their attitude of the women who followed Jesus? Okay, uh, brother, that says, um, brother Aluze, that they were committed, yes. What else can we say about them? Selfless. They were committed, they were selfless. They were. Okay, so one thing that was said there is that they stood afar off. Even though they were committed, they wanted to know what will happen to our Lord Jesus Christ at the end of the day. They were also in a way afraid. They didn't want to go too close because they didn't know what is going to happen to our Lord Jesus Christ. But in a way, they still followed and they were observing. What about Joseph of Arimathea in verses 50 to 53? So what are some of the attributes of Joseph of Arimathea from those verses of scripture? I see him as a secret uh, kingdom influencer because he never agreed with what the, um, uh, the other people, the other member of the council were doing. Yes, he was a so, member of the Jewish High Council and he did not agree with their actions and he made this fact to be known. Yes, what else can we say about Joseph of Arimathea? He was a good man. He was very, also very bold. He was a bold man, yes. What else? He was outspoken, yes. He made known his views even at that time. So he was a good man, he was a righteous man, he was a politician in his own time, and he made his views to be known. Then can we identify any three acts or deeds of Joseph of Arimathea? Still looking at verses 50 to 53. Any three acts or deeds of Joseph of Arimathea? He used his position to get the body of Christ, yes. What else did he do? He was a believer. So we are now, we want to emphasize on the acts, what he did, what he actually did. 
Yes, so he wrapped the body of Jesus Christ in linen cloth. He, and then he laid it in a tomb, not just any tomb. It was a new tomb that he had carved out of the rock. So we move on now, reading the introduction. The introduction says, kingdom influencers are believers who impact the world through their ministries and in the marketplace. Kingdom influencers are believers. They are children of God. They are born again children of God who use their ministries. And when we are talking about ministries, what do we understand by the word ministries here? Who use their, who impact their ministries and in the marketplaces? So when we are talking about ministries, their, their office. Yeah, the marketplace more or less will deal with the office, but yes. in particular now when we talk about a ministry, that relates to children of God. They, they are calling. calling. Yes, yeah, maybe you are a teacher. You are a chorister or whatever, you are using that to impact your world. So, moving on, it says, like the media, the politics, hospita uh, hospitality, fashion, marketing, music, education, and technology. By sharing their faith, their substance, and expertise to enlarge God's kingdom here on earth. So, and God is encouraging us as his children to be influencers like I said before, we have the ability to be able to control or how other people behave or how they react. There are some people, by the fact that you are involved in something, you can get other people to also do the right thing. So God needs his children to be kingdom influencers. He wants us to take over the affairs of influence here on earth for the excellent execution of his agenda. And the question to us this morning is, are, we, are you as a person, are you willing to partner with God on this mission? Do you want to be a partner of God in influencing others, even for the purpose of the kingdom? We are going to be looking at two outlines. The first one talks about the attributes of kingdom influencers and then becoming a kingdom influencer. What are the attributes? What are the characteristics we must find in the life of a person that wants to be a kingdom influencer? Maybe I throw that open. What would be the first thing that a kingdom influencer should have? You yourself must be a believer. You must be a child of God. For you to want to influence things about the kingdom of God, you must be a believer. So kingdom influencers, like the first opening statement that says, who are believers in Christ, they contribute to the economy and social well-being of their societies by using their skills, they use their chosen professions, they use their vocations, they use their divine calling. In other words, they use everything that they have to be able to influence even the kingdom. Let's see Acts 16, 14 to 15. The book of Acts 16, 14 to 15. Let's see proper clothes. We worship God as she listened to us. The Lord opened her heart and she accepted what Paul was saying. 15. She and her household were baptized and she asked us to be her guests. If you agree that I am a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my home. And she urged them until we agreed. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. So we see a believer there who opened up our house, even for the use of the disciples, even during our own time. There are also God's people who positively affect the people and their society through their good works. There are also people who are full of um, good works. Acts 9, 36 to 40. So that's another way we can be an influencer by doing good works. And people can then attest even to this work that we are doing. Acts 9, 36. Yes. 40, yes, please. There was a believer in Joppa named Tabitha, which is 
which in Greek is Dorcas. She was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. About this time, she became ill and died. Her body was washed for burial and laid in an upstairs room. But the believers had heard that Peter was nearby at Lydda. So they sent two men to beg him, please come as soon as possible, 39. So Peter returned with them, and as soon as he arrived, they took him to the upstairs room. The room was filled with widows who were weeping and showing him the coats and other clothes Dockers had made for them, 40. But Peter asked them all to leave the room. Then he knelt and prayed. Turning to the body, he said, get up, Tabitha. And he opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we see there Tabitha or Dockers who had the ministry of ministering to the widows. And by the time she died, it's like this one cannot go. And they had to send for Peter who prayed for her and brought her back to life. They combined their faith in God with their professional skills and positions in the society to shape and reshape and also influence their environment, even to the admiration of God and happiness of the people. We may not be able to read all the Bible texts, so I will just move on. Then they have specialized skills in research, in football, in athletics, boxing. The skills can cut across different fields. The important thing is that whatever skills we have been gifted with, we use this even for the purpose of the kingdom. Then some of them also occupy prestigious positions in government and they earn the respect of people. And we can see the instances of Joseph of Arimathea that we read about in the text, that he was a Jew, he was a council member. In other words, he was into politics and he used his position even to influence things at that time. Luke 23, 50. Then we also have the instance of Deborah. Deborah was a prophetess during her own time, and she was also a judge. In other words, she was able to use her legal knowledge to judge the children of um, Israel. In Judges 4, 4 to 5, we have um, Eliezer. He was in, used his military skills to fight and then to save the Israelites from the Philistines. Then as um, influencers of the kingdom, we must also be Christ ambassadors. We must publicize Jesus Christ anywhere we find ourselves. So those are some of the attributes that we expect um, a kingdom influencer to have. Can we identify similarities and or differences between being a kingdom influencer and then carrying out Christian social responsibilities, CR, CSR. So what's the difference or what's the similarity? For somebody who is a kingdom influencer and somebody who is carrying out activities under CSR, or are they the same thing? Anybody please, yes please. Yeah. Okay. The community, yeah. Necessary be a believer. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Because it's a giver, a, a, a peacekeeping person, then that means um, he will go straight to heaven. To heaven. So that is where the, 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 the um, difference is. Okay, Thank so you. for the CSR, people carrying out Christian social responsibilities may not necessarily be born again or children of God. Whereas for you to be a kingdom influencer, like we said from the beginning, you have to be born again, you have to be a child of God. So moving on to outline two, becoming a kingdom influencer. How can a person become a kingdom influencer? How? The question is thrown open. How can you as a person 
become a kingdom influencer? What can you do to become a kingdom influencer? Anybody? You must be a believer. Yes. You must give your life to Jesus. You must become born again. You must be a child of God. You must be a born again child of God. Romans 10, 9. You must also be prepared to share the good news with others. So it's not just enough for you to be born again, to be saved. That good news, especially at a time like this, I don't know how many of us came out for the Let's Go Fishing on Friday. It's not just enough for us to be saved. We need to also share this good news with other people. Then we must be filled with the Holy Spirit because of ourselves, we cannot do anything. It's the Holy Spirit that can help us even to fulfill even this great commission that God has given to us to go out there and win souls for the kingdom. You must also be a person who has a large heart, who is able to accommodate other people. They are faced with challenges, they are going through various um, trials and you are there for them basically to, as much as possible as lies within your means or within your power. Then to be a, an influencer, you must be hardworking. Somebody that wants to influence must be somebody who is hardworking, who is smart and also who is able to advance your, his or her chosen career or business in a positive way. In other words, you are using what God has given to you, either it's your skill or your profession to influence other people in a positive way. You must also develop either as an individual or as a team, you must have a strong voice. And we have an instance in Apostle Paul. Let's read Galatians 2, 11 to 14. And then somebody get ready, Daniel 3, 16 to 19. 11 to 14. Okay. But when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his I had to oppose him to his face, for what he did was very wrong. When he first arrived, he ate with the, with the Gentile believers who were not circumcised. But afterwards, when some friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish believers followed Peter's hypocrisy and even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. 14, when I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I said to Peter in front of all the others, since you, a Jew by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, why are you now trying to make these Gentiles follow the Jewish traditions. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Thank you. Daniel 3, 16 to 19 as well. Thank you. Sadrach, Mesa, and Abdenego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we did not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power your majesty, but, but even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue of your, uh, you have set up. Thank you very much for the reading. So the important thing from those readings is that we should never, never be afraid to make a, a strong position that we hold known to other people especially when it comes to defending the truth of the gospel. Not only should you develop a strong voice, but also must prepare to be a game changer in your respective sphere of domains. In other words, if you need to make a change, even with your voice, wherever you find yourself, please go ahead and do it. You must prepare to give a good account to the people and to Almighty God. Determine that you must at all times be a good steward. So the essence of all these things is that, number one, we have it at the back of our mind that we are going to give an account. 
at some point, one day is going to come when we are going to be faced with Almighty God and we need to present an account of ourselves. Then you must be determined that you must be an ambassador, a good ambassador for Christ, a good steward of the kingdom. So what role can a kingdom influencer play in politics? We want to see change around us and yet we are not ready to be a part of politics because many believe that politics is a dirty game, is dangerous and what have you. But then how can you as a kingdom influencer, how can you influence in politics? What can you do? We have to be a part of it. So how many of us belong to political parties on this land? We agree, yeah, we, we have to be. We, we are all saying we have to be, but nobody is making the move, to, even the starting point of even joining the political parties. So maybe our take home assignment is we go and research how or what we need to do to become a card carry member of political parties. And God will help us in Jesus' name. I have, I'm not in any as well. <laughs> I'm not in any as well. That's why the assignment is to us all. <laughs> So we'll do a research, how do I become a political party card carrying member in this land? We want to begin to start influencing politics in the land. Any questions or contributions? We have just three more minutes to go. Kingdom influencer, question, contributions before I read the conclusion. Yes, Brother Aluzi. Praise the Lord. Um, a lot of the times, I think, well, I'm just going straight. Um, Archbishop of Canterbury, he is doing his best to actually fight for human beings. And um, a lot of people that are not really Christian, that are now ruling us, are trying to treat us like slaves. You know, and um, he is doing his best. But now, you could see that when you are in politics, there's so many situations that you know hits against you it takes a bigger person that can actually go into you know beg god for help for him to actually you know continue to be um, a christian while in politics and also not sell themselves out thank you very much for the contribution any other one i'll just read the conclusion it says everyone has influence and god expects us to be good stewards of that influence for his kingdom's sake. Our Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you. We bless you, we worship you for the topic that has been taken today, which is an eye opener to the fact that we can actually influence where we are, our community, even for the good of the kingdom. And so our Father and our God, we are praying for grace to be able to move forward and then be able to turn things around even for the benefit of the kingdom in the name of jesus father we commit the rest of the service unto your hand take preeminence in jesus name for those who are yet to join in hasten their footsteps in the mighty name of jesus such that at the end of everything we shall return the glory and honor unto your name in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to church. Can we please be on our feet this morning as we welcome one another to the presence of God. It's Easter Sunday. Let there be excitement in the house. Hallelujah. Oh, it's a bit too quiet. Hallelujah. Oh, please spread some excitement. Look to your left, to your right. Welcome somebody with the love of God and please move forward as you do so. Thank you for coming. Please occupy the seats in front of you so that those who come later can stay um, at the back. Thank you. Uh, this morning we'll start with the hymn that says, All hail the power of Jesus' name. We can have the lyrics, please.
verse, please. that a sacrifice made over 2,000 years ago will still be very relevant today. Begin to thank God for the sacrifice that was made on the cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you for redeeming, redeeming us back to you. We thank you for giving us the spirit of adoption, and now we can call you Habba Father. Father, we return all the glory unto you. Thank you for the love, the unconditional love. Father, may your name be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Just begin to worship the King of Kings. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't sit down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't tide up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, no wall you won't. No shadow, God won't light up. No shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Running after me. No wall, it won't kick down. No wall, you won't lie down. Lies, you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow.
mountain, it won't climb up, cause it's coming after you. No wall, it won't kick down, lie, it won't sit down, it's coming after you. No shadow, you won't light up. No shadow, you won't light up. we thank you begin to say thank you Jesus father we give you all the praise amen, amen. hallelujah amen. indeed our God is good is there anyone who actually believes that Jesus loves you do you believe in the love of Christ hallelujah
of sin is broken. We have perfect liberty. The Lamb of God is risen. He's alive. in heaven and has made the earth his footstool. If your God is alive, just begin to worship him. If you don't serve a God made by the hands of men, begin to worship him. Father, we thank you for the hope. Thank you for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. We return all the glory to you, Lord of heaven. Because he lives I can face tomorrow because it leaves all fear is gone. Jesus died for you and we come against every spirit of depression we come against every anxiety we come against every despair and father we ask that the power of resurrection would over over us today because it lives Yeah. 
we never go back to bondage in Jesus name for all the son has set free is free indeed let all those who are free shout hallelujah 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 please let's be upstanding it's prayer for nations time hallelujah We just want to open our mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Let's thank him and say, Father, thank you for enabling me to see this day. Thank you, thank you, because you've uphold and protected me. Thank you for how you have seen me through. Thank you for how you preserved my life. Thank you for you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to come and die, to take away the sins of this world. Lord, I am grateful. I am grateful and I am privileged. Be thou glorified, Emmanuel, in the name of Jesus. The love of our living God was poured out when Christ died, rose and then set and then sealed resurrection, resurrection forever. Let us bless the name of the Lord who loves us and all humanity forever. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord for his love upon us, for he showed his love upon us. Let's begin to say, Father, we are grateful. We are not taking this for granted. Father, we are grateful for how far you have shown your love upon us. I begin to pray and say, Father, we thank you. We thank you. You would have withheld and said, my son, don't go down. Let the world suffer for their penalties. Let them suffer for what they have passed through, for what they have caused. But he would not withheld his son. He said, let the son come down unto us. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. For all are going out and coming in. In the year 2024, so far, let us begin to add, thank God for securing our lives, for protecting us, for taking us out and bringing us back safely. We have not had an encounter of witnessing any form of accident on our ways. Even those that have been involved in it, God has been severed to save them out of it. Let's begin to bless God for security. Let's begin to bless his name for saving us, for taking us out and bringing us back safely. We are in the last day of the month of March. God has been faithful. He has protected us. He has guided us. He has been there for us. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all you preserve our life. Thank you for how you protected us. Thank you for how you protected us. You give us safety, O oh God, when we don't even deserve it. We say, be thou glorified, Emmanuel. For in Jesus' mighty name we shall pray. Pray that the Lord God Almighty shall, by his resurrection, open the eyes of this church generation to behold swiftly things that make for them for their peace jesus christ the son of the living god many if you were here in the morning when pastor was taking us through the workers and ministers he break out a lot of cons conspiracy theory that people have been bringing up concerning the dead and resurrection of jesus if you listen to them more and more you become so into it 
I want us to pray and ask that all Almighty would open our eyes of understanding so that we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. Because if we get inclined into this, we might be diverting into the things of what they believe. Let's begin to ask, oh God, open the eyes of your believers. Open the eyes of those that trust in you. Open the eyes of those that are still in the midst of not knowing what to do. That God Almighty will open their eyes and let them see the good things that the Almighty God have done for us. Father, we thank you, O oh God. We bless your name for your resurrection, O oh God. Open our eyes of understanding that we might know the good things that you have aligned for us. Be thou glorified, our Emmanuel. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Ask the Almighty God to rekindle his revival power as it was in the olden days. We can see that the love of God is waxing, is waxing cold each day, each day. We are all going to ask the Almighty God to increase us, O oh God. Let the Almighty God revive that spirit. That spirit that when you gave your life to Christ newly, the, 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 the zeal for you to do the things of God. What is wrong with you that is, if those things are going down now? Let's begin to ask God, revive that spirit in me. Give unto me that spirit of God to serve you, to go the extra mile, to go the extra mile, O King of glory. Father, Lord God Almighty, I ask, O God, that you increase that zeal in me. Let me not serve you at my confidence, O God. Let me go the extra mile to serve you, King of glory. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Be thou glorified, our God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let us pray for the other parts of the world where oppression prevails. We know the way oppressions are prevailing. There is war between the Israelis and the Palestinians. There is war between Ukraine and the Russians. There are several countries that are involved in several wars that we are not even aware of. I want you to use this privilege to pray for those nations and say, Father, establish your peace in those nations that are fighting. Let them find a low leveling ground that everyone will settle things, O oh God. Let's pray that those nations that are fighting war in any form, in any way, God, let there be peace established in those lands. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, establish your peace. Establish your peace in those lands. Wherever they are fighting, wherever there is war, let there be an establishment of your peace in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Let's ask the Lord that, let's ask that the Lord shall see to it that the current economic crisis is shortened in duration to minimize suffering from the people in Jesus' name. Let's begin to pray and ask God, whatever economic situation that we are fasting through, Lord God Almighty, that come and rescue. You are the one, you are the great economist. You are the one that knows the right decision. You are the one that knows the best decision, Father. Step into all the leaders, O God, and intervene in their situations, O God, and turn things around for your good. Be thou glorified, Emmanuel. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Time for testimonies. Please, if you have test any testimony, please, could you come forward? Testifiers, come forward, please. Have 10 minutes. Okay, Pastor, you can start, please. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to thank God for his faithfulness uh, over my life and that of the ministry. I was called within six days to organize the last Let's Go a Fishing program with the parishes that were not in the former parish. The first thing that came to my mind was, number one, why so sudden? We could have planned this within three months and improved on what we did last time. Number two, you restructured again, not the same parishes. So, and we, that was a Saturday. I had Sunday to, to have discussed with the pastors for them to have announced to their members for the thing to happen on a Friday or so. But I just had in my spirit mind that God, that you are a soldier and soldiers don't complain. Obey instruction and I will be with you. And straight away, why the senior pastor was still speaking with me, I just said, okay, send me the email. Let me fast forward a little bit. They sent me the parishes. I started calling them. And the last person I spoke with said, ah, pastor, I'm not at home until 10. I said, okay, we will finish the meeting for 10 p.m. 
And from that 10 p.m., we started having meetings almost on a daily basis. The cooperation, the unity, none of them miss any of the meetings. And before I say, you do this, the person will accept. And I just went, I saw the hand of God in the program. And finally, when I was told that the central office is going to send assessors to look at the programs and award marks and all those things, uh, then they sent to me the assessor. Who did they send to Good News Haven? They sent to us the Bible College Director, who is an assessor of assessors. I nearly fainted. I said, why him? <laughs> but I want to thank God for the cooperation I received, for the hand of God I saw, and for your prayers and involvement. You will not fail, you will not fall, you will not falter in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just want to say uh, thank God for the journey mercy in going and in coming back. And even within the country itself, we say we have to thank God for that because Nigeria, we are more or less, we have lawless people. <laughs> I can see them. Because in driving, you face to each other, even on the wrong way. And only God can help Nigeria. And I pray that nothing happens. Thank God. Glory be to God. I want to go down. I want to thank God for granting me for protection. For taking me to Nigeria safely, Amen. northern part of Nigeria for that matter, mm. <laughs> to bury my dad. I just give God all the praise because he went ahead of us. Even beyond what we planned, God was faithful. People cooperated. Things went well beyond what our imagination. So I want to give God all the glory. Hallelujah. I want to give him back all the praise. praise and again, I want to thank God for everybody that traveled. People traveled from far and near. They've all be, gone back to their destination safely. I want to give God all the praise. Hallelujah. And lastly, I want to tell Good News Heaven family. I am really overwhelmed. People showed me love. Mm. I just want to thank God. Thank, thank you. you. I'm a bit emotion, but emotional, but I just want to thank God. Thank you for the love you showed me. And I pray that this love will continue to exist amongst us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I am really grateful from the bottom of my heart. Now go there, now go there, now go there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Um, I just want to give glory to God for what he has done for me. Um, grateful people are great people. And God has shown me mercy at my workplace. The position that I've been praying for for quite a long time, he did it. And I'm so grateful to God for what he has done in me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. First of all, I want to bless God for the salvation of my soul, which is the ultimate, the most important, and happy Easter, church. I just want to bless God because God is a faithful God. He has been with me and my family, he has not left us, he has not forsaken us, he has not made me a widow because I knew what happened in months that has passed. I knew how God has kept us, he has blessed us has given us divine healing and most of all I want to bless God because God has added another year to my year today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning church. I just want to thank God for what he has done for me and my family for making us alive today. I just want to give him all the glory. I also want to thank him for um, making me pass my exams in good grades. And lastly, I want to thank God for adding another day to my year today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God for my life. I want to thank God for my family. Thank God for the salvation of my soul. I just want to thank God. God has been a merciful father. He's been kind. I just want to bless his name. A few months ago, on the 26th of December, I lost my younger sister. And it was as if uh, it was, the world has crumbled. It, was, it pained me so much. It was so painful. But I just give God the praise that even the preparation of the burial was something else. But last week, she was 
led to rest. I just want to say, may his name be praised forever. That God that saw us through. All the people that came went home safely. May the Lord be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. May all the testifiers stand up, please, for a short prayer. In Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the testifiers. Thank you for the Goa Fishing Program. Thank you for those who travel to Nigeria for one reason or the other. Thank you for the burials that have taken place. Father, we thank you for those who are celebrating their birthdays. Thank you for those who you have preserved their lives. Father, we just want to give you all the glory, all the praise, because it is by your own doing, by your mercy, your grace, your favor, that all these things have come to pass. We thank you because you are God who answers prayers. We thank you for protection of your people. Father, we just say you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to receive all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. Father, we thank you. Glory be to your holy name. Father, we know that there are many others who are yet to testify. There are many others who are waiting for the answers to, your, to their prayers. Father, we know that you are God who has heard them. Father, answer them speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. So that when next we gather, Father, they will come to testify to the glory of your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Good morning, church. This is our uh, little Easter presentation from the children. They're going to tell us what Easter means to them. Is it about eggs or is it about something else? <laughs> Thank you. Christopher? Okay, good morning, church. I'll be reading the verse, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. To me, this is a reminder that Easter is a season to celebrate Jesus' death and resurrection Jesus did to save us all from sin. Good morning, church. Today I'll be reading from John 11, 25 to 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall live. And whosoever liveth, and believeth in me shall never die, believeth in this. To me, Easter means the fact Jesus died on the cross to save all of humanity and pay for our sins by his blood being shed. If Jesus hadn't done this, we would all have to die because of the sins we have committed. It also means to me how he resurrected, having victory over death and given us the Holy Spirit when he was heaven. Thank you. Good morning, church. My Bible verse will be taken from Luke 24, 6 to 7. He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. This reminds us that Easter is not about all the chocolates and sweets and gifts. It's about us giving thanks to our personal Lord and Savior for dying on the cross for our sins to be forgiven and coming back alive to save us again. Good morning, church. My, my Bible verse is Matthew chapter 28, verses 5 and 6. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see where he lay. To me, Easter is a time to remember Jesus rising from the dead three days after he was crucified, and him granting eternal life to all that believe in him. Easter is also about the love Jesus has for us and the purpose and peace he gives us. Thank you very much. Um, I just want us to thank God for the lives of the children. Um, I told them that, okay, when we finished uh, Mother's Day, I said, oh, we don't have enough time, you know, to practice and do things for, to do the presentation the way we would have loved to do it, because we just have two weeks. And I said to them, go home, think about what Easter means to you. So everything they've read out is their own. Oh yeah, everything. I only the only thing I just supported them with is the Bible verse. 
and maybe just to correct a few, you know, like grammatical errors, but everything they've said is what they've thought about by themselves. Yeah. So thank God. Thank you.
What is that name that when we mention dead things, we come alive? Is there somebody in the house this morning that wants to mention that name? You, re you really want to mention that name? I still, can, I still cannot hear you. You can do better than that. The Bible says at the mention of that name, every tongue will confess that Jesus is what? Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you this day. Thank you for the privilege for us to be able to call that name Jesus. Thank you for what you did for us on the cross. Thank you for the word that came to pass through resurrection. Thank you for the victory you have won for us. Glory be to your name. The grace we need to be able to respond as you want us to respond to your suffering on the cross. We receive the grace as a church in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. You can tell your neighbor, Happy Easter. And if they are not saying happy, if they are not saying happy Easter, you can say happy Easter to myself. Or you can tell the person at your back or in your front. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate the best choir in the whole world. Come on, come on, come on. And I'm not missing words when I say that. They are simply the, the best. I miss, I miss them during the let's go and fishing. I was saying I wish they are in charge, but because we are six parishes, we have to also step aside for others to lead. Amen. And um, when the assessor was looking at everything, he said, just one thing I want to correct. I said, God, what didn't we do well? Pastor Mrs. was there, and, she's, and he said, you're ministering to a crowd, means multitude. You don't sing Yoruba songs. You sing English songs. I look at my wife. I said, if it were to be us, we know what to do. <laughs> but then how to take responsibility. That is because we didn't have time to practice and the choir didn't come together. Next time we do better. Come and celebrate the best choir. They sang a song that I'm no longer a slave to fear. If you are here this morning, you are still a slave to fear. Let me tell you, the victory that Jesus won on the cross for us through resurrection is not operating in your life. Say with me, say I'm no longer a slave to fear because I'm now a child of God. Say confidently, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God because of the victory he won for us on the cross. You know, Hebrews 2.14 was speaking, speaking to us. Hebrews 2.14, it says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Praise God. And I want to let us know that it wasn't the resurrection of Jesus Christ that defeated death, it was the death of Christ that defeated death. He died on the cross to defeat death. Christ's death defeated death. His resurrection merely displayed the victory. Victory for us as a church, victory for us as a family, Victory for us as individuals. Victory in our spiritual sojourn. Victory physically. Victory in terms of prosperity. Victory in terms of good health. Victory in terms of life. He won the victory for us on the cross. That in the place of failures, we will become winners. We will become successful. In the place of poverty, he said, by, he said he became poor that through his poverty that we might become rich. So I see people that are prosperous this morning in the name of Jesus. He, he, he won the victory for us on the cross so that sickness will no more be our portion. 
He said, by his strife that he received, we are all what? We are all healed. So the people I see this morning are the people that are healed. If you are, if you are the one I'm talking to, come on, marry for Jesus. So he has won the victory for us. The grave could not take him. The tomb could not swallow him, contain him. There are soldiers who are not able to watch over him. <laughs> there was a great earthquake. And the Bible said, and on the third day he arose. I speak into somebody listening to me this morning. Everything that has been contained, everything that has been limited, everything that has been imprisoned, everything that has been bossed to a corner in your life that God has not approved of, this day, the resurrection power is making it to come alive in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, come out of that grave. Come out of that tomb. Say, Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. In the place of shame, you have to become famous. No more shame, no more limitation. Jesus defeated Satan. So Satan cannot have dominion over you. He defeated sin. You, sin can no more have dominion over us. You can only sin, commit sin when you want to commit sin. If you tell yourself by his grace, I'm no more a sinner, I'm not going to commit sin again, you will no more be found committing sin. And you know the beauty of all, even when you make a mistake, you find yourself on the floor, you commit sin. The devil will want to tell you, you are finished. You tell the devil, no, what Jesus finished on the cross can no more finish me. I have committed sin, you cry to God. Satan cannot help you, you know that. The pastor may not understand, may even give you a knock on the head. But when you cry to Jesus Christ, when you cry to Abba Father on the cross, you genuinely cry to him, you genuinely go back to him. You are saying, Father, I'm sorry for this. Have mercy on me. I will not go back to my vomit again. I will not go back to what I am repenting of now. Jesus Christ on the right hand side of God, not on the cross, because it's no more on the cross. The right hand side of God, of God, of God is will be telling God, look at that son, look at that daughter. The devil wants to take over him or her, but I pay the price. These hands we are pierced. There was piercing on my side, the crown, the reproach, the shame, the death on the cross. I paid the price, and you know the full the thing of the matter is that he paid the full price. He didn't do it like mortgage, 10, 20 percent down. He paid the full price. And God will say, okay, son, daughter, your sin is forgiven. Go and sin no more. Who will not serve a God like this? First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 to 58, quickly. I understand I have about 15 minutes now. Now this I say, First Corinthians chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Hallelujah, somebody. Verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then it shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Somebody shout with me, say, Death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 55 says, Oh death, where is thy sting, O grave? Where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are going to read verse 58 together. Verse 58. One to go. Therefore, my beloved brethren, 
Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, in as much or for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Tell your neighbor your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Once again, happy Easter. Hallelujah. Let me skip my notes. I wanted to start telling you what is the meaning of Easter. Why Easter? I don't know those things. Do you know those wonderful children have already taught us what we need to know? So if you don't know what is Easter, why we are having Easter and all those things, go back to YouTube and listen to the rendition from the children's department. Let's put our hands together for the children's department. We are celebrating Easter, celebrating Christ, celebrating King Jesus. Because he said, it is the day he disarmed and defeated Satan. He defeated sin. He defeated death by coming out of the grave victorious. And that's why what we read just now says, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's this resurrection that ensures that we have a new life apart from our sinful nature. He's alive. Tell your neighbor he's alive. He's no more in the grave. And we sang a song this morning that because he's alive, you can face everything in the future. You can confront that thing and be a success. He won the victory for us. The victory was won for you and I that you would no more fail. Look at your neighbor, see neighbor. The victory that Christ won for us by his death on the cross and resurrection on the third day is forever. It's forever. So you choose to do what you want to do with the victory. If you fail tomorrow, it's not because the victory is not there. It's because you chose the path of failure. If you are not successful tomorrow, it's not because God has not configured you and put the DNA of success into you. It's because you choose to be How you ro rose the third day and then you stop there. Let it reflect in your life. Have a positive mentality. You too can become. You can make it in life. You can be great. 
Christ has won the victory for us. You can serve God and become the best. You can live a holy life. You can obey instructions from the scriptures. You can worship God by his grace. You can evangelize. You can pray and divinity will answer you. Let the resurrection, the message of the resurrection, that change everything in life. No other faith has that message of resurrection. Mention the faith. None. So if it has changed everything and they are trying to manipulate so that what it has changed will not be changed or that the power in the resurrection will not be seen, which they are not able to. In those days, it was not possible. During Jesus Christ, it was not possible. Now, it's not possible. No matter what they say, it's not possible to change what the resurrection has brought to mankind. The question is, will you allow the resurrection to reflect in your life? How do you respond to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ? Let me begin to round up. I told them in the morning, talking to the ministers, I told them, Jesus Christ did not die a suicide death, as people are saying. He did not die of old age. He did not die of accident. He did not die of any disease. Jesus Christ did not die as a political hero. He did not die simply as an example. And he did not die simply as a Messiah. Messiah. He did not die because he was a criminal. No. And I backed it up with scriptures. In this service, in the next five minutes or so, let me quickly conclude by saying, the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to die, to take away our sins and die by save mankind. His death was foretold. He came to die for your sins, for my sins. The Bible says, why <laughs> we are yet sinners, Christ what? died for our sins. His death was a necessity. It was not just by chance. It was foretold. It was not an accidental death. He didn't commit suicide. We are not like the other faith that say, by the time they kill how many before they now have how many virgins in heaven? Which heaven are they going? Where are they getting the virgins in heaven? Hebrews 9.22 says, the latter part says, without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Matthew 16.21 says, moreover, he knew he had come to die. Let me read it. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised again the third day. He knew. You can read Matthew 17, 12. Because of time, you can write Luke 9, 51. John 3, 14. John 10, 11. And Revelation 13, 8. Number two, the Lord Jesus Christ died willingly. He died voluntarily. He was not forced. As the sinless one, there was no cause of death in himself. Look at that John 10, 18. John 10, 18. No one takes it from me. Jesus Christ was speaking. But I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. He voluntarily laid down his life for us because it was the will of his father that he should do so and because he loved you and I. Number three. Or if you have time, you can read Matthew 26, 53, Psalm 48, Mark 14, 41, Luke 22, 53, John 7, 30, 
and John 8 20 to portray the fact that he died willingly. Number three, the Lord Jesus died as a sacrifice for sin, to put away sin. So when they ask you why did he die, you tell them he died to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. There was no other better sacrifice. Because every other sacrifice had committed sin. And that's why Isaiah 55, no, Isaiah 53 quickly, Isaiah 53 verses 5 to 6. Maybe I will use it for the next point too. Isaiah 53 verses 5 to 6 says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are what? Look at the next verse. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You can read John 1.29. It's not today, she didn't give me time. Minister Gladys. 1 Corinthians 15, 3. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Hebrews 9, 26. And 1 Peter 2, 24. To portray the fact that the Lord died as a sacrifice for you and I. Number four. The Lord Jesus died as our substitute, bearing our penalty. You know the Bible says the wages of sin is what? So it was for us that he died. It was for us he hung himself and suffered on the cross. He died instead of you and I. He died in your place, in my place. And he bore the punishment which was due to us. Like we saw in Isaiah 53 verse 5. Because he was wounded for our transgressions. The bruises he received was because of our iniquities. Hallelujah. For time's sake, you can read John 10, 11, where he was saying, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. You can read 1 Peter 3, 18, Psalm 100, verse 10, or Psalm 103, verse 10. Number five, the death of the Lord Jesus was victorious. Victory on the cross. You have no choice but to be victorious in everything you do. At Calvary, he provided salvation for all mankind. John 3, 16, the popular John 3, 16. Want to go, everybody? For God so loved the world, I can't hear you, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. Ask your neighbor, do you have this everlasting life? And it's easy, all you need to do is to believe. First John 2, 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. We can read together. One, two, go. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And none for us only, but also for the whole world. I don't know where you are hearing my voice. You might not be hearing my voice in the sanctuary, in this auditorium. But wherever you are hearing my voice, he died for you. He paid the price for you. Color is not a barrier. Height is not a barrier. Education is not a barrier. Location is not a barrier. His allocation will meet you wherever you are located. Let me take one scripture and we pray. John 9, 35. John chapter 9, verse 35. I'm supposed to tell this story. I don't have time. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe in the son of God? You know that blind man that was born blind, that Jesus Christ hid on the Sabbath day. You remember the story? Okay, it's getting clearer now. I wish I have time. And that when Jesus Christ healed him and the uh, Pharisees saw him, they started querying him. Ah, no, 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 no. It, it cannot be true that you are healed by that sinner. And all you remember the story now? And he told them, whether you call him a sinner, I don't know. But one thing I know, once I was blind, but now I can see. Ah! They left him. You know, they went to the, to the, to the parents. They want to change the story. They want to change the narrative. Whatever people are trying to change nowadays has been of old. They want to tell you the gospel is not good news. 
They want to turn it upside down. They want to tell you Jesus Christ is like any other prophet. It is not true. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the only Son of God, the begotten Son of God. You can't go to the Father, make heaven, except by Him. Whatever other name you call is by the way. Only Jesus can save. They went to the parents of the man that was born blind, but can I see when they saw that the man was energetic, they said, ah, 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 tell us, is this your son? The parents said, of course, we know our son. Is it true that he was blind before and uh, he cannot see? Who did it? They want to put the parents in trouble and the parents knew what they were looking for. The parents said, that is our son, we know. That he was born blind, we can agree. But how he became... Somebody that can see, or who did it, or what they did. Ask him, he's of age. Rise up this morning. And Jesus asked him that time. When they now saw, they could not succeed, they cast him out. That's where I'm going. Jesus now looked for him. Oh, they cast you out. They don't want to have anything to do with you. Or oh, this is what Jesus said. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? Do you believe? There is somebody here that needs to answer that question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Can you say it? he is enough for me? That Jesus Christ, the man of Galilee, is enough for me? There's a song that says, It's enough for me. It's enough for me. For me. The man of Galilee. It's enough for me. One more time. It's enough for me. It's enough for me. The man of Galilee. It's enough for me. Please bow down your head. Do you know him as Lord and Pesta Savior? You want him to be enough for you? You want the victory he won on the cross to be your portion? You have to be attached to him. You have to know him for yourself. It's not a parental decision for the children. You heard the story I was talking. Even the parents said he is of age. Ask him. If we ask you today, can we say, you have taken that decision that you believe in him and have accepted him as Lord and Savior. In this resurrection period that we have, may the resurrection power work on your behalf. But it can only work if you believe. The grace of God for us, not only just to believe, but to walk at our belief with fear and trembling and release to the whole church in Jesus' name. I speak into your life. May you be victorious. May the victory he won for us not be in vain in your life. May you be victorious over death, over sickness, over poverty, over the demons, principalities, Satan, in the mighty name of Jesus. Above all, when he comes, when the trumpet sounds, or if you go before the trumpet sounds, may you not miss heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, celebrate God. Go ahead and celebrate God. You may be seated. You may be seated. I know for Easter you must have prepared your Thanksgiving offering. You must have prepared very good Thanksgiving offering. We we'll ask you to prepare that. We are going to dance rejoicingly together at the end of the service. You will come, present yourself to God. You come out of your seat, whether you have seed in your hand or not. You come here, dance here, and dance back to your seat, telling God the tomb could not hold me down. The grave could not hold me down. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's welcome the person taking the announcement. God bless you. Hallelujah. Happy Easter, everybody. I'm here to take the announcement and also to talk about the 19th anniversary of the church. Multimedia, please. Okay.
2024, my year of divine repositioning and settlement. First Peter 5.10. Month ending today is a month of no more limitations based on Matthew 19.26. On Wednesdays, we have a Bible study from 7 p.m. to 8.15 p.m. It's currently by Zoom. So come and let's dig together into the word of God. On Fridays is our prayer meeting, Good News Hour, from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., currently also on Zoom. Our Sunday services starts at 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., and it also includes um, Sunday school. We have our home fellowship every second Sunday of every month, and the details of venues are available with the church administrator. All elders are invited to our regular bi-monthly meeting which is holding today immediately after the service. So come, let's fellowship around the world with some food as well. So if you recently joined, uh, turned um, 50 and you are not yet a member of the group, you are invited to join today. Um, this Friday, by the special grace of God, is the Holy Ghost service for the month of um, April. And the theme for the month is um, Shielded by Fire. So in view of that, we will not have um, the good news hour. So we are encouraged to join through the various um, social media platforms. Then our sister, Sister Nikki's program, Incense of Worship, is an interdenominational monthly virtual worship experience. So for the month of um, April, it's coming up on the 7th of April at 6 p.m. So let's take note of the time, it's 6 p.m. The theme is showers of blessings, and it's coming up on through the various um, social media platforms. Um, this is an invitation from Sister Minister Abimbola Kende, and she's requesting for our prayers for the burial of her mother as she travels to Nigeria. The families of late High Chief S.K. Adeyei cordially request our pleasure to the final burial ceremony of their wife, mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. And uh, it's, all the events are taking place in Nigeria. She was aged 50, 84 years old. We only. And as she goes, please let's support the family as well, financially, as the Lord lays in our heart. Yeah, this program is still going on in support of Eurocon, is a 40 days of prayer with a theme, Let the Wind Blow. It started on the 2nd of March. It's going to end on the 9th of um, April. So there's a one-hour prayer meeting every day. The time is um, 8 p.m. UK time. So let's join in as much as we can. And then the Eurocon itself will hold on Thursday 11th and Friday the 12th of April. It's coming up in Madrid, Spain. We need to register to attend if we are interested in going. Are you sponsoring, sir? <laughs> the Changer, which is a charity of one of our ministers, Minister Yinka Shoe Mimokoka, She's running this program basically because of what she went through and as a give back to the community. So there's going to be a talk on prostate cancer and it's coming up on Sunday the 14th of April. The time will be 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's usually through Zoom and we have opportunities to ask questions. So please, let's send out the invite to our families and friends. It's a good thing for us to be aware of all these things. Cancer is currently ravaging the entire world. Yes, the 19th anniversary of the church. Are we excited? Yes. To God be all the glory for the great things that he has done. Some have been here from day one when the church started. Some have joined along the way. And now is year 19. God truly has been faithful. So the anniversary committee we have met and um, the theme for this year is in line with the theme for the month of uh, May, is divine repositioning for settlement. And our guest minister will be Pastor Sheyi Oladosu, who is one of the provincial pastors in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. So this 
anniversary celebration will start from Wednesday, basically. We are going to have a three days fasting and prayer program from Wednesday, the 1st of May to Friday, the 3rd of May. So we'll be meeting daily through Zoom just for 30 minutes to pray. And then after the prayers on the Thursday, we'll join in for the service in Nigeria. Then on the Friday as well, immediately after the prayers, we'll join for the Holy Ghost service for the month of May. Then on Saturday, we'll have the family fun day and barbecue. There's going to be a novelty match. How many of us were around for last year's own? It was a time of fun. The men and the women. There was a novelty match between the men and the women. For the women, there was no rules. So they could play with their hands or any part of their body. <laughs> and then we had up to up to maybe like seven goalkeepers. So there was no way the men could score. So we are going to have a novelty match as well this year. There will be a match between the youths and the teenagers as well. Yeah, there won't be rules. No, there are no rules for the women. <laughs> it's just for us to have fun, basically. And there will, there will be barbecue as well. So that will be on Saturday. The time will be from 12 noon to 4 p.m. Then on the Sunday, we'll have the Thanksgiving service in the morning from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Then in the evening, we are going to have the celebration and album launch from 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And um, like we did last year, we intend to do the same thing this year. We want to fund the anniversary without having recourse to the church. God blessed us last year and we were able to do this and also had a bit of a surplus. So we are trusting God that this year as well, we are going to fund every aspect of the anniversary without recourse to the church. And so to this end, the committee, we've drawn up a budget and to be able to ensure that we meet up with the budget, we are saying that all the ministers who are working will please support us with a minimum of 100 pounds. The workers will be 50 pounds and if you are a church member, 25 pounds. And one of the things the committee said was that we should please not be intimidated. If genuinely you cannot support with the amounts that we have called, whatever the Lord lays in your heart, please do. And if you are not able to support at all, don't feel intimidated or don't leave the church because of that. The anniversary celebration is going to come and it's going to go. There will be other opportunities if you are not able to support this time to support other future events. So let's pray along even for the anniversary and above all, let us pray that even in line with the team, which is divine repositioning for settlement, Almighty God will divinely settle each and every one of us. In whatever area we want to be settled, he will divinely settle us in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, before I go on to that, somebody else will be taking this aspect. I understand multimedia, you wanted to show some pictures. You can go ahead now, please. The first night vigil held on Friday, physically, after the COVID period. We had um, 55 people in attendance, which was encouraging.
Then the let's go fishing one. Across the parishes, we had about 150 people attending. Across the six parishes, 149 there about. Yeah. the assessor, Pastor Dr. Akazeme. He walked along with us all through the Let's Go Fishing. This was on the way to the link. We started out from the Thames Mead Leisure Center, and then we went to Morrison, stopped by at uh, Grass Haven Way, Titmos Avenue, and then made our way to the link. The elders were not left behind. That's a uh, mommy Ujo there. Please fast forward to the end. Thank you very much. Do we have anybody fellowshipping with us for the first time? Either online or in the church physically? Anybody? If you are worshipping with us for the first time online, please kindly drop your details in the chat box and somebody will get back to you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I want someone to smile. Praise the Lord. Quickly, it's couples night. We thank God for last year, couples night. Everyone who, up to my knowledge, from last year to today, we are still living. I didn't hear anybody passed away. So I just want to give God all the glory. So quickly, it's another couples night. Can I have my humbly assistant come out outside with me please quickly because um, time is not a friend so quickly why she's coming please the couples night this year um, we've packaged a lot this year so quickly um, to be honest I don't even know where to start from um, the committee are putting a lot together so the committee are putting a lot together to making sure that this couple's night is fantastic. We've taken a lot of things on board. Uh, there were a lot of feedbacks 
from last year and then we've put in everything together to making sure that this year couples night is wonderful but before we go ahead can the multimedia please play the short clip please Not a local one, international. Yeah, not global. Wow, we don't know that. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. So, what will the people be expecting in this year, 2024 couples' night? Brother Holy, for those that have been to Good News Haven couples' events, we know we come with class. We come wow, with class. Uh, high standard. Hmm. Compared to what we had last year, we're going to have a red carpet. So red carpet? We're going to come dressed in our nice dinner gowns wow. and our nice suits. And nice you walk suit. down the red carpet wow. with your husband in your arms My like this, and you take nice pictures. That's one. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have the 360 revolving. 360. You know how we? I like know. The I know. was dancing like that. Okay. We're going to have that one. Mm -hmm. We're going to have guest speakers. Guest so speakers. Three course meal. Three. After that, one, we'll have Q and A. Okay. We'll have romantic dance with your couple. Do you know the best part for me is the opportunity for you to ask. Questions. Questions. Ask your que the questions that are bothering your home, that are bothering your relationship, or where you need light to be shed on, where in the community of other couples, Great. Christian couples, mm -hmm. Bible-believing couples, mm -hmm. please, let's come together. Mm -hmm. Let's prepare to attend this couples event 2020, this year, mm -hmm. 2024, mm -hmm. on the 25th of August. And God has promised to be there with us. Amen. We, we have come, promised ourselves to be there mm. and we know we are all going to have a good time isn't mm. it that's it like that's previous it. years we are going to have a great time but yeah. only right so like you said great time so we're having a fantastic dj yeah oh yes oh yeah red carpet i know right so like you said three course meal in fact there's so much to and forward. so much package yeah. The oh hall is fantastic. The ambient, oh my goodness. And even gift pack. The oh gift pack so after much. everything. Yeah, We're yeah. going to give a gift pack as well. Snacks. Wow, before snacks. Before. In there's fact, so much there's so forward. much It's forward. such a dinner date, a date night. You can call it anything you like, but it's a time for couples to come together. Leave the children. Mm. Find somebody to look after these look children. God nanny. will look after these children. Look, look for a nanny. And prepare the home. Prepare yourself, I and mean, you can even stay over at the hotel. Stay over, that's right. Make it you a weekend a, away. That's it, you can stay over, you can book your hotel earlier so that, you know, you'll get a good, a good a discount. So it's a good that's time right. to start planning mm -hmm. to, to attend this event in August 2024. So start saving if you have to, start preparing, organizing childcare, organizing your rota at work, mm -hmm. organizing your life. Well, the video has said it all, um, so we're not going to say much. The price, I mean, the amount is £100. Actually, the committee came together, we wanted to make it couple, sorry, per couple. So, £100 per couple. Actually, the committee came together, actually, we looked at it and we wanted to make it 150 Because last year was 100 and you all know things have gone up, prices have gone up. So, we have to pay for everything, the DJ, the video and all that. But truly and truly, pastors had beat. When I went to pastor and I had a meeting with pastor and said, pastor, this is what the committee said. And pastor said, brother Olu, I want all my children to be there. So I don't want a situation where somebody will say, because there is no money, I can't make it. Pastor's had beat is for homes to be sorted. So brothers and sisters, pastor said, 100 pounds flat for couples. That is fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, 100 pounds. Initially, I was thinking, Pastor would say, okay, 100 pounds for the church and for outsiders, 150. Pastor said, no. For everybody, 100 pounds. To be honest, my heart really, I felt, wow, this is really father. And also, 
for those quickly, for those who want to come, Daddy said, for those who want to come, but genuinely, if you're not working, you know, come and see Pastor. He wants everybody, doesn't want no couple to be missing. I mean, like to say, because I don't. So if you know you haven't got money or for one, circum, one reason or the other, you can't make it uh, financially, see Pastor, please, I beg you. And also, even last year, Pastor had to sponsor three couples, three couples. And looking at Pastor, when I was, anytime I sit down with Pastor and I see his heartbeat, I said to myself, you know they said if you sit in the shoulder of those who have gone ahead of you you will see far so into people's life and i said to myself i will announce this if there's anyone husband and wife who is not working i will sponsor one person i will sponsor come and see me and say you are not working one so if there's anybody if there's any couple just for example if we, we i mean we should be our prayer keeper quickly Let's say, for example, Braubog is not working, the wife is not working. And I am I'm a very good friend of him. I can come and call him. I don't want him to be missing in that. I will call him and say, Braubog, I will sponsor you. If there's anyone, okay, thank you. If there's anyone in the congregation and you know of somebody who is not working, you can sponsor the person. Um, thank you very much. My time is up. Um, please see any member of the committee. See myself or Sister Funke. Uh, the deadline for making payment Please, any member of the committee, please stand up so that you can see you quickly. Um, please, just stand up if you're a member of the committee. Quickly, quickly. The deadline is April, end of April, end of this month. Actually, coming April. Please make your payment because last year we had a problem. Towards the end, everybody started coming in. We have a problem phoning the hotel. And please, we only have 60 spaces. Please, thank you very much. And... We would love to see you there. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, with the moving department, we have a thing that we're going to show you this morning. It's all about forgiveness. We all know the dangers of unforgiveness. And even this season, the season of love, if God has not forgiven us, he wouldn't have come to die for us. So we owe this few ministers to you, even as you watch it in Jesus' name. Oh dear, you had an accident. Hey, how now? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Sorry. I think it is this, so don't worry. I will come and see you. I will come. Sorry, sorry. Take care. 